Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Good Morning to Beagle right here on to Beagle Updates. Guys, you know when you see me sitting here, it's because we're about to have those conversations that you want to have and ask the questions that you want asked. But before we get into this morning's extremely interesting conversation, I want to start off by giving you your news in 90 seconds. Now, yesterday, scores of Tobagonians came out to pay their respects to Mr. and Mrs. Adams, who died in a tragic accident on May the 18, 2023. The proceedings began with a procession from the Brel Grove Funeral Home to Shaw Park Cultural Complex and was conducted under military rights by the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service in honor of Christian Adams. Several dignitaries paid their respects, including Farley Augustine, MP for Tobago East, Ayanna Webster Roy, and Senator Lawrence Hislop. Reverend du Duane Sam urged mourners to emulate the love the couple shared. The deceased were laid to rest at the Mount St. George Methodist Cemetery. Additionally, Martin George, chairman of the Tobago Business Chamber, urges senior officials of the THA to address the public on allegations of corruption. This is after a leaked voice recording of was circulating involving two members of the Executive Council. Additionally, the voices highlighted a scheme to hire persons within the THA in exchange for spreading propaganda for political gain. Mr. George called on the leaders of the THA to be held at a greater moral and ethical standard. Additionally, on June the 10th, 2023, the first edition of Capture the Flag of Trinidad would be held at the ballpark grounds in Macoya. The inaugural event features a three-way face-off between Maruga Secondary past students, Arima Secondary School Alumni Association, and Presentation College Chagronas. The winners would advance to the finals to be held on the 23rd of July at the Dwight York Stadium. Eight Tobago schools are vying for the coveted title and will compete on the 25th of June 2023 in the pre-qualifier stage. This event is the brainchild of the Scarborough Secondary School Alumni Association. And that was your news in 90 seconds. Now this morning we're going to continue a conversation that we've been having for the past two weeks after as the one of the news stories highlighted where um, Martin, attorney Martin George would have commented on that leaked um, alleged voice recording that was put out in the public space of two THA officials and a number of persons have given their feedback on that. We have talked about the narrative surrounding that and this morning we're going to continue that conversation and to have that conversation with me this morning I have the man himself, our former Chief Secretary, Mr. Ansel Dennis. Good morning. Good morning, Chanel. It's a pleasure to be here once again. And good morning to viewers and listeners across Tobago and across the country and others who may be taking in this program in other parts of the world. Excellent. Thank you again for being here. It's always a pleasure to have conversations with you. Now, we're going to start off um, by playing a couple clips and then we'll get into the conversation. Definitely. Even if it is, even if it is, we f f find find the plan, create the plan, the, the strategy, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Bring it here once you get approval. Mm -hmm. Whether it is, you see, have thirteen people now. You might just need five or seven to do to strict PR, so you could use some to do some propaganda. Whether they're going to use fake profiles, whether they're going to use their own profiles, whatever they do. And um, what you will have to consider is finding a way um, to employ people. On the THA side, um, could be menial, so, right. menial so we tasks. Don't to, we don't have to pay. Right. Yeah, most of them kind of got a way to Chanel, and we found that. And most of them kind of get employed already. Yeah. So, so that's so the others who not employed would, to bring them in because they are happy to do the thing on the side voluntarily. You know, once we employ them eight to four in a lucrative. So they get income. Inco yes, yes, that is what we know. So we will organize. And that will, and that, and that will help. That will help. Even with, um, as I was indicating, um, with the challenge you raised in terms of how to be going as are responding to the the moves in Trinidad, that can help in shaping the narrative. Because about shaping the the narratives, I don't want us to stop campaigning and then switch it back. And I think by now a lot of you guys would have already heard that clip. Um, so I don't think there's any need for us to truly 
try to ventilate it. It's been talked about for the last couple of weeks. However, there are some other clips that um, Mr. Dennis, you highlighted that are pivotal to the conversation. Yes. Um, could we have the, the other clip with the now Chief Secretary speaking during the campaign period about the, the, that contract with the people, the social contract? We go to the social contract clip. I just want to give my um, producers some time to just pull that and um, make sure that we have that on on there. Um, however, you think that it is important for us to discuss this particular clip because you feel like it highlights a contract that has been broken. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about that while my producers get the clip for us to, um, to go through. Definitely. I think this um, administration is proving to be very deceitful and very dishonest as it relates to what was promised to the people of Tobago during a campaign, all with the intent of, you know, winning an election compared to what is happening now. And, and during that period, the chief secretary um, engaged publicly in this arrangement with the social contract where all the members were asked to sign that contract. All the candidates then, and of course, 14 of them, went on to be PDP assemblymen. And in that contract, there were a number of promises made, a number of guarantees given to the people of Tobago, several of which have already been broken. One of the things they promised to do was to remain in contact and constant communication with the people of Tobago. We are seeing a number of Tobagonians, including people who supported, who are at the forefront of supporting this current administration during the election period, prominent Tobagonians who are unable to get in contact with the, the chief secretary. And we hear the average Tobagonian as well complaining that all of their representatives are inaccessible. And, and therefore, that part of the contract has already been breached. But there were further parts of it, I think number five and number six, um, which to me has been flagrantly breached based on this voice recording. And the voice recording clearly is the voice of the chief secretary and the secretary of education discussing an arrangement and planning an arrangement. And I think in one part of the voice you note, know, they hinted to the fact that, you know, this has already started. Some persons have already been employed for this purpose. And it is a betrayal of the people of Tobago. And therefore, we have found ourselves in a situation where we have an administration, right, 13 assemblymen, because of course Watson Duke is no longer part of the team, and three councillors, who have signaled to the people of Tobago by virtue of their silence, because it has been, what, nine days? I guess they expected that after nine days this issue will, will die, but clearly it's not the typical um, situation. It's, it's clearly not a nine-day wonder. And nine days later, it's, it's complete silence, and therefore I want to call them by name. Uh, right. before, before we move forward to, to your next point, mm -hmm. I want to focus a bit about what you said about the recording. Mm -hmm. Because you, in your contribution, you are insinuating that this recording has been verified and authenticated to be, to yeah. be uh, the real thing or to be genuine. Mm -hmm. However, we have heard no real investigations coming forth, whether it be from right. your team or from the TTPS that indicates that there is or there was the authentication of this recording to prove so, that indeed this was the so certainly, conversation that was had and in the order that the tape is being publicly distributed to so, demonstrate. So certainly it is not for me to investigate, but I'm sure this matter will attract the attention of the Integrity Commission. It will at least be reported to the Integrity Commission. So it's not for me to investigate, but I am 36 years of age. I beg and I have sense, and everybody in Tobago beg and have sense, the adults, that is. And having heard the chief secretary's voice, possibly more than a thousand times, having heard the secretary of education's voice, more than a thousand times as well, um, 
for many years, I've known Farley's voice in the public space since 2015, I think it was. I've known Miss Hackett's voice even from that period. And therefore, I have no doubt, absolutely no doubt, that the voices in the recording belongs to those two individuals. I also have no doubt that it is an authentic recording because when you hear the conversation, it's very easy to, to know if a recording has been tampered with or several clips was pulled together. When you hear the ambience, it's consistent. When you hear the conversation, it's consistent. And it's definitely not AI. Right? All are we big and have sense. We heard the recording. I don't think I have therefore... I, I don't think I have encountered the argument of the particular <laughs> clip being an artificial intelligence. And I think that anybody well, who I've knows seen, the I've seen some chief person secretary saying that. or who also knows the voice of the secretary for mm -hmm. education would be able to say that this the this song for me and it sounds like them. However, we are now in the age of technology where anybody could put together a clip, extract the audio from it and chop it to reflect a conversation that probably did not happen. And so again, when the question of authenticity of the tape comes forward and you mm -hmm. said that you have the common sense to do so, mm -hmm. there are certain technologies available mm -hmm. to identify this. And so with the argument, I am hoping that in addition to coming to the fore to condemn the tape, which is necessary because of the contents that was in it, mm -hmm. I believe that that argument should be backed by some sort of investigative report that states that this right. is a genuine, authenticated recording and that I, you can stand on. And again, it's not for me to investigate, but I will call on the Integrity Commission to, to investigate it. And I hope that at some point in time, the, the relevant report will be made because it has to be reported. Of course, the Integrity Commission can also decide to investigate a matter. And, and this is a matter of broad public concern. And um, I hope that at some point we'll be hearing about an investigation being launched by the Integrity Commission, who has the responsibility to do so. Right? So I am prepared to say that it is a genuine clip. Who want to debate whether it's genuine or not, they are free to go ahead. Um, but as for me, it is a genuine clip. All right. And my <clears throat> producer has just indicated to me that the clip is ready. So we'll take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll start with that. Guys, see you soon. I am doing something strange. Today, earlier today, I spoke with a couple lawyers and I asked them to help me draft a contract, which tonight in your presence, I am going to ask every single one of my candidates including myself, to sign in the presence of a commissioner of affidavit who will stamp it. And this social contract, which I'm advised does not hold the same weight as other types of contracts, this social contract will be the guiding principle by which every single representative for the PDP must operate. And let me tell you how serious I am. These contracts, one copy, one copy will be stored with yours truly, the next Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly. <laughs> and as our candidates all hit the street on Sunday coming, they will drop copies by you. And there is a blank line called constituent which I am inviting you to sign at your pleasure because I expect you to hold your area representatives to these said very values. And I will tell you as your next chief secretary, people breaching this contract will result in them being outside of the executive council because it is about time somebody gets serious with the business of the people of Tobago. The eight principles are one, to use regularly organized town hall meetings and or modern technology to determine the consensus among the views of constituents on any or all matters that affect your lives. Two, to respect and represent the views of all majority and minority views, that is, of all constituents in the electoral district and the island within the government of Tobago. Three, 
to live in the strictest harmony and closest collaboration and connection with constituents. Four, to, con to maintain continuous and unreserved communication with all constituents. Five, to lead with diligence and honesty and to have a zero tolerance on corruption, nepotism, and waste. Number six, to responsibly use state resources and privileges. We want nobody abusing the privileges of their offices. Number seven, to give unconditional attention to and fight relentlessly for the community, businesses, family, and individual needs of every constituent. And number eight, in all cases, to prefer the interests of one's constituents above one's own and share with all the benefits from being elected. And finally, comrades, I cannot ask my team to sign such a contract and I not sign one myself. And so I asked earlier on the chairman of the party, Dr. Sean Ned, to affix his signature. Good morning, Tobago. Hey again, and welcome back to Good Morning Tobago, right here on Tobago Updates. Guys, the conversation is extremely interesting. And again, I have the man with me, Ansel Dennis, who is our former chief secretary and opposition leader leader of the PNM Tobago Council here in Tobago. And this morning we've been talking about that circulated recording of um, the assemblymen, allegedly. And um, right before the break, we played a clip regarding the social contract that was signed by members of the current executive during the campaign season. And so, Mr. Dennis, you brought it to my attention that it was critical for us to pay attention to this particular clip because of a number of the sections within the social contract. Um, you indicated section six and, 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 five. Uh, so and it, section five. It, so it spoke to a zero tolerance for corruption. It spoke to using state resources responsibly. And therefore, the question in my mind, the actions recorded in that clip, that discussion, does it represent a responsible use of state resources? Does it represent honesty, integrity? Does it re represent ethics and morality in, in public office? Does it represent an upholding of the Constitution and the law, which is part of the oath of office of all the assemblymen? And I would want to suggest that at this point in time, Tobago is in serious trouble. Because we have a situation where Farley Augustine, Faith B. Israel, Terence Beans, Natisha Charles Pantin, Wayne Clark, Sonny Craig, Niall George, Jerisha Hackett, Trevor James, Megan Morrison, Ian Pollard, Joel Sampson, Nigel Teat, Tasha Boris, Orlando Kerr, Sertika Williams O. have all signaled to the people of Tobago that they are quite okay with people within the administration breaking the law or conspiring to break the law. They are quite okay with persons utilizing public resources or planning to do so for their own personal and political benefit. They are quite okay with that, right? And, and I'm saying this because of their silence over the past nine days since Tobagonians first heard this recording and i'm saying that is a dangerous place for us to be as an island where the entire THE administration has signaled that they are quite okay and quite satisfied to remain silent in the face of blatant corruption in the administration but mr dennis i want to go forward to ask you a question in regards to you holding them accountable morally can you swear by these same standards for the administration that you led during your time or is it a different measure for that administration, seeing that you guys did not promise transparency to Tobagoans? Well, I, I see it being said as the flagrant excuse that the PNM did it before. And I want to say to the people of Tobago that the PNM, no executive council, no party meeting that I've been a part of, ever did we sit together and discuss how to be corrupt. That never transpired in the PNM. And I'm saying as well, with all the corruption that they have spoken about, 21 years of corruption, 
I, I see people still talking the foolishness about billions missing. This chief secretary conducted an audit. This chief secretary promised to report Zipline and report other issues to the police. And I'm asking, where is the police report? What is the status of those investigations? And with all the corruption they spoke about, no evidence of that has surfaced. And they have been in office for two years now, and all the documents are there. So if they had corruption and they were looking for corruption and they are the corruption busters that they claim to be, I'm sure that by now, all the evidence should have gone to the police. But clearly they are not corruption busters. They are corrupt themselves. Okay, well, that, that, that's a lot to be said. Um, well, when we look at this social contract, do you think that this social contract can be enforced? Um, to be quite honest, no, it can't be enforced. But the Integrity in Public Life Act can be enforced. The Prevention of Corruption Act can be enforced. But still, I think the fact that they campaigned based on this and they presented this social contract to the people of Tobago with certain guarantees and certain promises. Um, of course, by now we have realized, and I believe all of Tobago have realized, that we can't take this chief secretary's words and hold water, right? Um, we, we have realized that when the chief secretary says soon, he means never, because ex gratia was promised soon, the audit report was promised soon, and we heard recently that he promised a full revelation of this voice recording soon, but by virtue of his history, soon means never, right? So this social contract, clearly, we are seeing that it was simply an attempt to hoodwink the people of Tobago into believing that these people were serious people of integrity and that the chief secretary was seriously going to hold his administration to account. We saw where the secretary of infrastructure, he was possibly the first person to break the social contract very obviously, and he was not dealt with. And we are now seeing that the chief secretary no longer has the moral authority to deal with anybody in his administration for corruption, simply because of this recording which has revealed that the Chief Secretary was prepared to utilize state resources for his own political and personal benefit, which is a breach of at least two or three different pieces of legislation in this country. And that is simply my opinion. Of course, that is subject to the uh, investigations that I show that I'm sure will come right and in relation to those investigations, I want to hear from you particularly I mean clearly this audio clipping was released with malicious intent to destroy the current administration there's no denying that I beg um, to differ because and you can and, you, and you, are entitled, you are entitled yeah. to that but let me see why because you see it's interesting that we are treating this individual or individuals who may have released this clip. I, I saw somebody said they, they, they are traitors, right? But it could very well mean that, it could very well be that it probably was an individual who um, is totally fed up with what they have seen for the past few months and are acting as a whistleblower. And right now in this country, we are moving towards legislation to protect whistleblowers. And if I would not see the person as a traitor or the person had malicious intent, this person or group of persons probably has Tobago's interests at heart by preparing to reveal what is taking place with this administration. And I'm even hearing in the grapevine that there are other things that the people of Tobago may need to hear about. Okay. Um, so what, what I was really going to get into is <clears throat> we, we just painting the picture or in the context of <clears throat> how the audio clipping was released. And you said it could possibly be someone who was just fed up. However, with the investigation that you are hinting to, uh, coupled with the revelation that the chief secretary is speaking of, now most of your contributions have been based on the fact that you believe this to be authentic and that um, the cause behind it being released could definitely be because someone was fed up. But what if more information comes to light that shows otherwise? Are you willing to come to the public and say something different? Um, what if it really was a conspiracy um, or even 
something bigger at play because I am here and I'm sitting and I'm waiting to hear from the Chief Secretary, mm -hmm. just like the rest of Tobago. And mm -hmm. I'm sure Tobagoans want to hear what is this big revelation and why haven't you come out as yet to debunk what has been put well, out in the public space? To be honest, I don't expect any big revelation because, again, in the past, when the Chief Secretary said soon, we shuffle off the Executive Council coming soon, soon and reach yet. Tobagonians getting next Russia soon, soon and reach yet. So based on that, I don't expect any revelation soon. I mean, what could the Chief Secretary possibly come to tell us? But what if we see something that indicates that indeed this was not authentic and indeed it was done with malicious intent? Are you willing to come back here on Tobago Updates and us have this conversation post that in the, big revelation? In the highly unlikely event that this audio recording is proven to not be authentic, of course. But again, I will repeat, I beg and I, and I have sense. And based on what I heard in the recording, I listened to it several times. I paid attention to the ambience, the words, um, the, the flow of the conversation. And come on, anybody with common sense should come to the conclusion that this was some edited tape. And as for malicious intent, I am not sure what the, well, I mean, perhaps in, in terms of this talk about malicious intent, maybe it might be somebody who didn't have their way or some secretary who is upset with the chief secretary. But at the end of the day, I will choose to look at it in the context of whistleblowing. And I want to encourage Tobagonians generally, especially public servants, whenever you witness wrongdoing, report it. Report it to the police, report it to the Integrity Commission. And actually, there's a clause in the Integrity in Public Life Act which protects persons, especially public servants, who report matters and report politicians and other persons in public life to the Integrity Commission. It protects them from any um, repercussions like victimization and that kind of stuff. And again, this country, under this current government, is moving towards whistleblower protection because we have to ensure that when people sit in meetings and when people in, in the usual occurrences of their work discover wrongdoing or they witness wrongdoing, they must be comfortable and, and in some cases I think rewarded for reporting these kinds of matters because it is very important for us to root out corruption wherever it exists. Right, <laughs> and I want to give the persons on social media a bit of a voice here because we have some comments that are coming in from the like. <coughs> One of them asks, um, if the PNM didn't also have or don't currently have their own propaganda team that is, is quite obvious by a lot of the conversations that is seen on social media and a lot of the profiles that are very present in this space. So that is the, that is the question that's been so, asked. So let me say the, the PNM, of course, like any serious political party, has a PR team. We have a PRO, and the, the PRO leads that PR team that is responsible for um, communications and public relations. There are people who support the PNM that may not be directly attached to any PR team or any arm of the organization, and of course, they support the PNM. And I must admit that at times they say things um, against this current administration, and they may not even be supporters of the PNM. They are just against this administration, and sometimes they say things that I will not say, or things that I will not even agree with. Right? right, but let me let me answer that question more directly. Again, at no point in time did the PNM engage in the use of state resources for anybody to do PR and propaganda. <clears throat> right, and I, I see some 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 things here, but I I think that they're kind of bordering on a personal nature, and I wouldn't want to highlight any of those things to well, you. But you have well, the opportunity people, to view the comments and see for yourself what persons are saying. Um, but I want us to stick to the facts who, and stick to the relevance. Who's talking there? The same fake profiles that they're possibly paying for? <laughs> I, I highly doubt it. I, I see comments from different individuals, but you would have the opportunity to peruse the comment section as well. But I, I don't want to bring anything that isn't relevant to the conversation or anything that attacks you personally. I don't think it's relevant Good. at this time. But we'll take a quick break and we'll be back right after this. And we'll talk a little bit about that conversation that I had with um, Mr. Def Trevor James I'm, yesterday I really in regards want to, get to the EME. That. Um, because he did indicate a couple of things, and one of those things was that it was a pol political malicious attempt against this administration 
when they are not given the approvals that they are requesting, the licensing, and when EMA is conveniently, um, you know, filing for injunctions whereby previously projects did not apply for EMA clearances and, we, and proceeded, you know, without any hindrances. So we get into that conversation Great. where we come back. And so I look forward to that, guys. We we'll take a quick break and we'll be back. Definitely. Good morning and welcome back to Good Morning Tobago right here on Tobago Updates. Interesting reading these comments. Very interesting. I see y'all. Um, guys, this is the reason why we're here. We're here to have the conversations. We're here to ask the questions that you guys want asked. And if I am asking questions that you don't like, let me know. And if I'm not asking the questions that you want to know, you ask the questions yourself and I would ask Mr. Dennis. But just keep it strictly to the point let's not get personal let's try not to insult anybody or anything like that and yeah let's have the conversation but as i said before the break we're talking a bit about the ema and for you guys that don't know the ema functions as an oversight body here in trinidad and tobago and their role is to enforce the environmental management act the ema oversees any type of project that could possibly have an environment negative positive environmental impact, whether it's from the public or private sector. And so yesterday we had that conversation with Mr. Trevor James, in, um, who Assemblyman Trevor James, who is also the Secretary for Infrastructure, and he um, extensively discussed with us that Chauvin to Storby um, Extender Road that is being built, and that is a single carriageway um, so that, that's happening. If you want, you can go back to yesterday's episode and you, you, will, you will be caught up with it. Um, however, he made some claims about the previous administration basically doing their own thing and not being subjected to the same type of scrutiny. So we're going to start off with that clip from yesterday. A short clip. And Over the then... last 10, 15 years, um, even when there was a UNC government in Trinidad, um, that would have put an EMA board into place and all of that. The THA from, 20, from 2009 to 2005, 2013 started several projects without EMA approval. We have Bell Garden House in development where a sewer treatment plant is on the bank of a river. We have Adventure House in development. Again, a sewer treatment plant on the bank of a river um, on more than five acres of land. We have Blemen on a mountain. Um, we have um, a breakwater in Pigeon Point. <laughs> we have Princess Bay Jetty in Roxborough. You have the revetment we just did in Roxborough as well on Princess Bay further down. None of those projects, and those are just some. I can go on, name 20 projects. Castara Fisherman facility, where the EMA actually wrote the THA and said, listen, stop the work. Um, you don't have approval to build that, 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 that fisherman facility next to a river and where the river and the sea converges. The THA disregarded that letter and finished the project. And the EMA never went to court to, create it, to have an injunction against them. So the precedent that we have met in the THA is that the THA um, understood, and we believe the EMA understood and understands as well, that the THA is responsible for managing the environment in Tobago, and the THA, through its division and Department of Environment, can manage those, those issues themselves. And I don't think it would be fair, you know, for us to not give you the opportunity to respond to that because he did indicate that under your leadership, a number of these yes, projects Yes, definitely. Happened. So now, this is your opportunity to respond. Shabba Jim is tired and gasping for air, all right? Because, you see, initially, you have to remember what the posture was. The posture was that, we do have to report to any EMA. We do have to agree to or wait for any EMA approvals. We could do our own thing. They even went to the House to bring a motion, a motion eh, to attempt to change the law. And anybody with common sense will know that a motion cannot change the law. So that was the, the stance first, that we don't have any respect for the EMA. The Chief Secretary even boasted that they had a meeting with the EMA and they showed the EMA the error of their ways. They went ahead now, after getting away with the stage in the sea, they went ahead to start this road in friendship. Now, not the EMA, now that the judiciary has granted an injunction showing them the error of their ways, they are now changing the argument. So it's no longer that 
the teacher doesn't have to report to the EME because that is clear in the law. And, and, and the judge in the case, I wouldn't talk much about the case, but the judge in the case hinted to that, right? They're now trying to talk about precedent. And clearly that is the argument they're trying to make, that the previous THA operated frequently in abuse of the EMA Act, and they can do the same. And that is the furthest thing from the truth. I want the director to bring up a couple documents and we'll go through them quickly. Okay, I'm just going to hint to my director that we are ready for those documents at this point in time. However, you are stating that these documents indicate that indeed you did file for yes. an EMA yes, clearance the... for a number of these projects. Explain to us these projects. Right, so, and this is available on the EMA website. If you see at the top of the screenshots, it's ema.co.tt. So all this information is available on the EMA's website. So Tobagoonians don't allow the likes of Trevor James to hoodwink you and come to the public and blatantly lie. So we'll go through them quickly. Um, you could see the CC reference. You could see the date the CC was issued. And you'll see a description near the project. So this is the Bell Garden housing development that Trevor James spoke to yesterday. Scroll through quickly. We don't have much time. Um, this one is the... It's part of the CC itself for the same Bell Garden Housing Development, scroll through. This one is coastal defense structures in the Little Rockley Bay area. I think that is the, the situation down there at Magdalena. This is the Roxborough Hospital, CC issued 19th of March 2020. This is the Sugar Road Housing Development, as urgent as that was when we were doing that development to cater for people disrupted by the airport development. We didn't touch a blade of grass before we got the EMA approvals. This is the, this one is what? Residential development at Cove relating to the airport. Scroll through quickly. This one is the establishment of a wastewater treatment plant for the Bell Garden multipurpose facility. Although we did not need one for the facility itself, we went ahead and we seek the EMA's approval to get get an, a, a CC for the wastewater treatment plant. This is the jetty up at Studley Park for the quarry, right, Barbados Bay jetty. This one is, I think we went through this one before. Yeah, so that's, that's, that that, that's probably right, so all. In, in essence, so, um, so in essence, the right. previous THA operated in accordance with the laws, right? Now, there might have been a couple occasions, I can only remember two, where we ran into some disagreement with the EME. But on every other occasion, even some of the projects that Trevor James mentioned yesterday, the Plymouth Housing Development in Adventure, the Bell Garden Housing Development, all of those had certificate of environmental clearance from the Environmental Management Authority. So the secretary is quite prepared to come here and lie to justify their foolish actions. And I want to say to the people of Tobago that the actions of the secretary and this administration by extension is dangerous because they went dressed up all nice and dandy in jacket and tie when they got elected. And they went and they took an oath. And part of that oath is to uphold the constitution and the law. And another thing he said yesterday, giving the impression that the EMA is some political tool of the government when he came here and lied to the people of Tobago that the EMA board is appointed by the cabinet. I want to read from the EMA Act, part two, section six, All right? There is hereby established a body corporate to be known as the Environmental Management Authority, which shall be governed by a board of directors consisting of the persons appointed in accordance with this section. The president, not the prime minister, not the cabinet, the president, shall appoint a chairman, nine other members. And I wouldn't read out that particular part because it talks about the experiences that the individuals must have. And then it says the board shall appoint a managing director. No way there mentions the cabinet. No way there mentions any minister getting involved in the appointment of the EMA board. So to come here and see that the EMA is a tool of the cabinet because the board is appointed by the cabinet lying to the people of Tobago, Right, is definitely dishonest and dangerous on the part of the, the secretary. And I, I mean, want to signal as well that we in the PNM intend to cause this behavior 
to be reported to the Integrity Commission as well, because we cannot have public officials who will come and operate contrary to the law, deliberately so, and placing the public purse at risk, because they now have to come and pay lawyers. I see the state, the THE, is being represented by Larry Lala and possibly other attorney, uh, attorneys, an unnecessary expense on the public purse if they had simply followed the law. Excellent. And um, we're going to take a quick break right now and we'll be back right after this, guys. See you soon. Good morning, Tobago. It's a good morning, Tobago, guys. And right before we had that brief break, um, Mr. Dennis was showing us evidence that indeed during his time in office, they really did apply for those EMA clearances. And it's important for us to and not, not just be my political. Not just my time and the PNM's time in office. Right. But it's important for us to not try to politicize the role of the EMA. And it's important, Correct. especially where environmental management is concerned, especially now with, you know, um, climate change and everything that's happening around the world. Um, outside of the political banter between yourself and um, Mr. James in responding to that, help the people of Tobago to understand why it is important for us to really take the role of the EMA seriously. Well, the EMA is really a watchdog for the environment of Trinidad and Tobago. Even the government of Trinidad and Tobago, that ministry down there and that minister that has responsibility for the environment, must also subscribe to the laws, must also subscribe to the requirements for CECs as it relates to certain developments. So it has nothing to do with, with, with just the Tobago House of Assembly. The EMA is an authority with responsibility for Trinidad and Tobago. And while, of course, the division of, with responsibility for the environment has responsibility for the policies concerning the environment, it does not mean that that division can do what they want. Just like the ministry with responsibility for the environment in Trinidad as it relates to the policies can't do what they want. All of them must subscribe to the EMA because it's important that we protect our environment, especially here in Tobago. Excellent. And so, uh, unfortunately, you know, we're out of time this morning and we have to wrap it up. But I'll allow you to just close any closing statement that you want to give or anything that you want to say, particularly to Tobagoans, before we take our break. So I, I basically want to say to the people of Tobago to pay attention to what is going on. We have an administration that is not, one, they're not prepared to follow the law. Two, they're not prepared to keep their promises. And three, they're not prepared to be honest with the people of Tobago. All right? So I'm saying to the people of Tobago, pay attention, mind your business, and try your best to live decent and, and good lives. Be careful and be safe out there, especially in this rainy season. And God bless not just the island of Tobago, but the country of Trinidad and Tobago, our nation. All Thank right. you. Thank you very much, guys. We'll take a brief break, and we'll be back with much more conversation. Coming up, I'm chatting with... Um, Eastern Credit Union about their annual road race that's coming up. See you soon. It's a brand new morning, rise up.